everyone, welcome to another video on the JB Hi. and Millie channel. Today we are going to be reviewing the next episode of Scooby-Doo and Guess Who, which is Elementary My Dear Shaggy. So I guess, been from the UK, this is the episode that in theory was going to resonate with us the most or be the one that we're most critical of. Yeah, because I think this is the guest at the very least that we know the most about. So I suppose we should kick off with our kind of review and breakdown of Sherlock Holmes and our background of Sherlock Holmes. So we'll start with you, Millie. How familiar are you with this character? And yeah, just that's it. A lot more familiar now I've met you. So JB introduced me to the BBC Sherlock show with Benedict Cumberbatch. We've been to 221B Baker Street together. Um... We, I, we, I've got a few of the books and everything, so I, I'd say quite familiar. Yeah, I'd agree, and I think I had some more knowledge about it, not based on like, the old original Arthur Conan Doyle books, although I do think we have them in the collection, but, you know, other materials like the Robert Downey Jr. Hollywood version, which was pretty cool, but primarily it's, you know, the Benedict Cumberbatch version, and also, I suppose, adaptations. Like, I don't know if you were showing this, but, like, on, like, you know, the last day of summer, the last day of, like, Christmas, sometimes we were showing, like, old BBC adaptations, like, before the Benedict Cumberbatch version. So, pretty familiar with the whole story. And exciting that it's set in London as well, which we're not dreadfully close to. We've not been there too much. But, I mean, how many times would you say you've been to London? I've been at least six, seven yeah, I think I've been maybe like 12, but 12 times. So not a great amount. That for you, that's like once every two years. Like considering we're living in the country, it's not huge. No, no. So I guess my next kind of point of conversation is our thoughts on how Sherlock was adapted here. I'm going to have to say, respectfully, disappointed. Yeah, I think the the concept is cool. Now, I would have preferred an adaptation, of course of the BBC version just because, you know, modern day it would have made sense to go, you know, for all we don't need to fit in with the canon of the original Arthur Conan Doyle version, we can modernise it up and so a modern Scooby meeting a modern Sherlock would maybe make more sense. But as it is, I kind of feel like, I I'm convinced and I haven't looked into this, but I don't think the voice actor for Sherlock would have been British and I think that would have been a nice touch, just get any... Brit off the street to voice this guy and I think he does a better job. I see I've got to agree I mean in the nicest possible way oh gosh the majority of Americans can't do a real British accent they get it too posh like it's I think the interpretation that people have of the UK is a far cry from what it actually is. Although I will is. say with it being a Scooby Doo cartoon I don't expect necessarily for like the rhyming slang I know we're jumping ahead I, I've never cringed so much at a Scooby-Doo thing in my entire life yeah. including Velma the rhyming slang was so cringy but equally I don't expect them to have these these people go oh, I get off my railway wankers like you know what I mean like I don't want them to go too Can realistic you say that? it's the British episode like, I guess so. this is the British episode but yeah, it was just a far cry from the truth, I think. And I think when there's been so many iterations of Sherlock, it would have been nice to have an actual Sherlock voice it. But then at the same time, it's that annoying thing that Warner Brothers are doing with Scooby at the minute where they get a good concept but refuse to 100% commit to it. So this couldn't be Sherlock. It had to be crazy Sherlock or whatever it was. It's odd. It's, it's almost like the way... And this is a weird comparison, but this is the best one I've got. Like how Warner Brothers and Scooby-Doo treated the zombies from Zombie Island in Return to Zombie Island. How they treated Vincent Van Gogh in Curse of the 13th Ghost versus the... Uh, 13th well, Ghost of Scooby-Doo. More it's recent like, than that even. Just how they treated the ghost well, in episode two of this series. No, no, because I'm, I'm, this is a separate analogy. Okay. It's almost like they had an original Sherlock and Scooby-Doo movie back in the day where Sherlock was real, he lived at 221B Baker Street, all of that was real, and now they've come in to do a remake where they have to add in seeds of doubt like, oh, this isn't the real Sherlock. You know, seriously, this is a fake. Yeah. This must be some crackpot Sherlock. It's almost like they're just trying to wreck on it from not being the real Sherlock because 
I don't know. Like, Sherlock isn't supernatural. Like, I don't understand why have a Sherlock and then Not go out of Sherlock. your way to go, well, this clearly isn't the real Sherlock. Now, a million percent, I am willing to bet if we went to London right here, right now, we could meet a guy high as a kite convinced he's Sherlock Holmes. I have no doubt about that. But I think to go that direction with this is a little bit odd. No, I have to agree. It's just strange. I don't know why they took it this route. If you're going to have a Sherlock episode, just commit to it. It it, it just wasn't... It, it kind of got this off to a bad start. It's odd, because you came up with this analogy. I don't know if this is stealing your thunder. Maybe it would be applicable a bit later. But it was odd to me, and this is maybe a separate comparison. But you compared this episode to a Batman crossover with Scooby before. Oh! Yeah, I did because can I actually get to the villain bit? Because that was I'll, where it came. Well, on. my piece wasn't any because it's separate. Was it's odd to me how when Batman is introduced, it can just be Batman, but whereas when Sherlock's introduced, it is a fake Sherlock. It's right. like if, it's almost like if the next Batman crossover is oh this guy is crazy like he's been reading too many DC comics. He's just a crazy I guy. I mean Sherlock's public domain now because what I was gonna say is Warner Brothers mm. hold all the copyrights to Batman so they can be like oh this is Batman everybody. They in theory didn't hold the copyrights to Sherlock. However, public domain they can do what they want. Wait, is that are you saying like so back then? It so, may not have been in public domain, so they had to make it fake, or as now. No, no, it would it... it would have been in public domain when this was done. My initial mindset when you said that was, oh yeah, but Warner Brothers try and promote uh. all their stuff, so that's why it's their stuff. Whereas if this wasn't public domain, they have to do something to convince people that they're not just recreating yeah. Sherlock. However, public domain, you can do what you want. So sure, so Scooby could meet up with Peter Pan and Winnie the Pooh. In theory. That would be cool. So yeah, I, I really didn't like this initial interpretation of Sherlock. The voice was off. I think the direction was a bit wacky. Again, I'm not against. If they just wanted to make it some... some well, I don't know what the politically correct term is. Some crackhead in London... That's gone to, like, some dodgy place in Soho to, like... You know what I mean? To do whatever people do on a Saturday night in Soho, whatever. And then he's convinced he's Sherlock. That's fine. But I just... I don't know. I don't know. I think there's so many missed opportunities here. Like, even a Mind Palace type thing, or Sherlock actually deducing things as opposed to running around saying wacky things. Like, I think that was a bit odd. No, I agree. And I also agreed with you on the Cockney rhyming slang thing, that they didn't actually know it was a Cockney thing and just... just associated with London. It's actually an outskirts of London thing, but it is what it is. I mean, obviously, there's this, you know, we can say this from this way around. Probably us in the UK, we've done similar things where there's been an episode set in America and it's been stereotypical route into it and stuff that isn't accurate. But I think to make it a little bit... I don't know what this was. I think it was very much London for kids. Like, you know, an American kid could watch this and laugh at, oh, there's the funny Brits with their funny apples and pears. But again, and I kind of feel like if this was the other way around, not in terms of America, but in terms of a non-country, like, like say, India, if it was Scooby-Doo goes to India mm. and there was a load of, like, stereotypical, inaccurate, you know, stereotypes of people there... I kind of feel like it's like a cancelled episode. I think they should have had a conversation with Joe Sichter because the one thing that Scooby did right in the UK was Loch Ness. And obviously it's like, oh yeah, it's the Loch Ness, how could you get that wrong? But there was just little details of like Scottish songs and stuff in there. They got it right. I don't think this was a mistake though. I think this was intentional because I want to say one Zoom call with a random IP address in London could probably teach you a more accurate sense than this it had to have just been a maybe the brits are a bit depressing unless we stereotype them to make it all rhyming and stuff they're not wrong so i don't know but for me there was just a lot wrong with this episode not just sherlock and everything like that but i didn't like the villain what is it the screaming skulls of london yeah so that's not a thing i think Oh gosh, I'm gonna. I might get hate for this. I don't know if I'm saying the wrong thing here. The UK has such a substantial amount of history. It's one of the most historic places 
imaginable. We've got castles everywhere. We've got so much history and so much that could be drawn upon that I kind of don't get why you have to create a green cloud. To me, it's one of the to me, it was definitely not a great Scooby villain. It wasn't a villain. I like to see an actual substance. If it, if it was more like the souls from... Oh, we can't call them souls. You call them whatever you call them from Scooby-Doo the movie. But you know where, like, it's each individual person breaking off and flying around? If the skulls could kind of break off and fly around the way that they did, if you get what I'm trying to reference here, JB, that might have looked cool. But to just have all these skulls kind of compact yeah, together just looked a bit stupid just didn't like the villain and also i think they were confused about what to do because i think they were like oh yeah we'd love to have an episode in london what's london sherlock's london great what else is london crown jewels great okay can we think of anything else oh yeah the london underground let's do that then and just tried to cram typically UK things into one episode yeah, without I, direction. I can acknowledge all this criticism probably sounds rich coming from me. Like, I'm the, the simpleton that doesn't know anything about the... Even on this show, I, didn't, I said I didn't know anything about Abraham Lincoln, anything about the American Civil War. I thought it was the Republicans versus the Democrats and... Apparently that's not the case. So I do understand if people are saying, well, how can I sit here and expect more accuracy for the UK? But I suppose my rebuttal to that would be, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not distributing content for kids that may or may not be used to partially educate them. Mm. Like I'm just some random geezer. But I think there could have been a good story here. It almost made me crave something like... A more adult version of Scooby Doo, not like Velma though, because this one would be good. But set in the UK, and they're trying to find out who Jack the Ripper is, or the ghost of Jack the Ripper. That's what I want. Uh, oh, one thing that annoyed me when they made Velma Watson, I was like, oh god, not you, because it just meant she was going to be talking more. Yeah. That wasn't good. And even um, the title, Elementary, my dear Shaggy, it's like setting Shaggy up to be Watson. Yeah, I, I dis. Uh, just a lot of disappointment with this episode I was really looking forward to it. I like Sherlock um, so another point that I'd made when we get to the unmasking um, was that in um, in like Batman crossovers it's always the Joker and Penguin and that's the villains so there's no reason why we couldn't have had like Moriarty or something to make it a bit interesting I didn't care who these two people were Yeah. it was all quite lacking it was a bit odd you know what it, it gave me the vibes of you know and I don't, you're, you're really clever so you probably can't relate to this but you know when you're in an exam and you've not revised how you should have revised or you're just <laughs> chatting out of your bottom and it's like write an essay about this yeah and you write about what you know you do it semi-confidently but then you just remember fragments of things. Words. And so you write a load of bollocks, and I can say that because this is the UK episode, I write, you write a load of bollocks, and then you just stick in factual things that you think the examiner will be impressed, you know. It's like that with her. Yeah. Like, they were trying to write a show like I say, oh, Mrs. Hudson, let's prove to the audience we know who Mrs. Hudson is. Shaggy, you're Mrs. Hudson. Oh, let's mention Mycroft. Let's prove we know who Mycroft is. Let's stick that in some other bit of bollocks. Oh, my gosh. Moriarty. Let's let's prove that we know who Moriarty is. Let's stick that in in some, some place. Well, it's not like even that. just that with the animation as well. You just got random landmarks popping up, like... Big Ben, Tower Bridge, like, it was all just like you said, buzzwords to try and get points in an exam. It, it, it wasn't impressive in the slightest. Um, I think it's disappointing, though, because I think I can see a version of this episode that was really good. I think we could write an episode. Like, Scooby and good. Sherlock is such a cool, like, idea, such a cool duo. I also had a few issues with the animation on this one. So... There was scenes where Daphne was walking, and when she was walking, it was kind of like back to the original Daphne artwork, almost like with the new style they'd given her, they didn't know how to animate certain sequences, like if she was walking and everything. 
again, it just, it felt rushed, it felt tacky, it felt cheap, it it just didn't feel well choreographed at all. See, I like Daphne in this. I like all the characters. The one thing I'm not getting as you are is issues with the animation, except for, like you say, the clump of skulls was very... It, it looked very rushed. The people, I don't know. I didn't find too much of an issue with them. Equally, I did like what they did with the colouring in, like, Sherlock's laboratory. I mean, that was all cool, especially how we got, like, a little red shirt shaggy easter egg. It was a bit different than what we've seen in the rest of the series. But for me, it, it was a little bit like, what is it, um, like, lipstick on a pig. Like, I like what I was seeing, but at the end of the day, it was kind of oinking at me. It was burping in my face. It wasn't. It wasn't impressive. It still stank. It did stink. And um, so it's without any shadow of a doubt. Naturally, this is a definite pass for me. I'm going as far as to say this is in my bottom five of things we've reviewed maybe i don't think it helps that i'd set my hopes very high but they were very high and this didn't deliver on a single front i think it disappointed me more and but i do feel sorry for the creators because i i have to believe a part of this comes down to budget because i compare this now in hindsight with the sword and the scoop, which people we know don't like, some you know, I love like sword and the scoop. Sophie scoob. didn't like sword and the scoop, and I, and you know, I see why, but it personally, I personally loved it because even for bit parts like Merlin, they made sure to get notable British actors on board. Like you had Jason Isaacs as Arthur, you had um, what's his name? Why am I forgetting it? Nick Frost as Merlin, two legends here. It's like. If they just cast some of these people, like the like the copper, what he had, two lines. Mm-hmm. I think Jason Isaacs. If he did a DTV, he did Scoob. Jason Isaacs would have done two lines, or just maybe not him, just somebody that sounded a little bit more authentic, British. like anyone from Doctor Who, or Corrie, or EastEnders, or Casualty. Name any BBC grade show would have done these lines for two more and it may not have been as funny and kooky and apples and pears wacky but i think it just would have felt a little bit more you know natural as opposed to let's get you know alistair smith from texas to do his best london accent see at this point as well i kind of need to say we're four episodes into the show and i'm disappointed because i enjoyed the first episode and i've not enjoyed an episode since really and i just feel like I don't know. I just. It just doesn't seem authentic or like they had vision or anything. And it's a shame because I think the first episode was trying to set up something very good that slowly went, not even slowly, rapidly declined. I mean, we've spoken about the UK. And I will say, for obviously, like I've, I've dwindled a bit, but this is definitely a pass for me. A significant pass. So far, it is my least favourite episode. But like I was complaining a little bit at first that the first couple of episodes maybe were too American-centric, we've gone from Sherlock in this episode to the next episode being Ricky Gervais, which I don't know if that's set in London or if it's... Because I know he also lives part-time in New York as well. But it is like a British comedian, British writer. So it's weird because you would expect them to have spaced them out a bit. Maybe there's something of a storyline where it's part of their UK trip. But even Ricky Gervais, him voicing any of these characters, whilst he was in the recording booth for his episode, I think would have added a bit more. Like, him as Sherlock would have low-key. It wouldn't have been accurate to Sherlock, but I think it would have been funny. But, yeah. Yeah. Not a fan. So that is two passes, which I think is the most, like, that we've done. Because I think last episode, I, did I, I think I passed so, that. But. episode one, we both pa- we both smashed. Episode two, I passed, you smashed. Then episode three, I smashed, you passed. This is the first one we've both passed. Ooh, so it doesn't pass the, bleh, doesn't pass the British test, and apparently neither did I with that, of that language. <laughs> that was kind of ironic. But it's okay, you know, maybe if you guys did like it, comment down below that you think we're... We're full of we're full of it because 
I do acknowledge maybe it was just we were so hyped for Sherlock, so hyped for some London representation that it was a little bit disappointing. But I can acknowledge, like, I'm the, probably the last person to talk to about cultural accuracy or historic accuracy. But as I said, next time it is, I think it's Ollie, Ollie Income Free, which is the episode with Ricky Gervais, who probably is the celebrity that I know the most about in the series, at least that I'm aware of. So I'm really interested into reviewing that and watching it. But again, this is quite a bit pre-recorded, I think. So I don't think we're going to do any community news, except for, you know, as always, we will have released a weekly interview. Again, we're plodding through with season three. We've got some really cool things coming up. Even us today, I will say we have made a relatively exciting purchase as part of some research for an upcoming interview. Haven't we, Melly? We have indeed. So we're definitely going on all cylinders as far as making sure that we know what we're talking about with the interviews and that they're they're good. So you definitely don't want to miss a single second of the interviews we have coming up because I'm doing everything I can to make sure that the third and final season is the most dynamic and the most explosive we've ever seen because we're going to end on some fireworks. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and if you do want to see more reviews then please like, comment and subscribe. JV and Millie.